Today on the patio, we're making pizza, but not just any pizza. There's a good chance you haven't heard of this one before. You can thank me later. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're making some pizza. It's a little different than you're used to seeing. It's very, very popular locally. I'll let you know what it is in a little bit. Before we can do that, we gotta prep our Big Joe. Let me bring you in close. We'll get this guy fired up. So we've got our Big Joe fired up. I bought this earlier this week. It arrived yesterday and we're gonna break it in. Now I'm not making traditional pizza, but I am gonna use this and I'll show you a couple tips to help step up your traditional pizza game. Listen, if you've got a Kamado Joe, Pizza Stone is one of the first accessories that I recommend you have. And that in the Joe Tisserary, it just adds a lot more functionality to your Joe. So this was the first one I bought for the Big Joe. We'll unbox this and let this start to get a temperature. There we go. So just a nice big pizza stone. There's, you can make pizza with a smaller one, but when you have the big one, it makes it a lot easier. And if you need a second set of deflectors, you can use this as well, since it'll fit inside. You'll also notice I've got a couple stones here. Now, why is that? When you use a pizza stone, you saw that I put the deflector plates right at the top here. If I put my pizza stone in that position, what's gonna happen is I'm probably gonna burn the bottom of my pizza. So what you do here, take a couple rocks, and I'm just looking for roughly a flat surface there, and we'll put this guy on top like so. And now we've got an air gap. I'm gonna run this about half to three quarters of the way open and we'll dial it back. Our target temperature today is 450, it was already at 500. But this air gap here, what that allows it to do is your pizza stone's gonna get nice and hot, but you're not gonna burn the bottom of your pizza. I've been doing this for many, many years. Uh, probably about seven years ago I started doing that and it makes a great pizza. Back then the uh, Jodo did not exist, or Dojo, sorry, did not exist at all and that's the way I made pizza. And I'll tell you what, if you don't want to spend the money on that accessory, this will make some phenomenal pizza. I've made a lot of people pizza and impressed a lot of people. Typically what I do is I'm going to shoot for 450 to 500 and your pizza is going to be done in seven to nine minutes, depending on how thick it is. But I'll tell you what, it's a delicious pizza. But today we're not making traditional pizza. This is going to be actually served at room temperature when we're done with it. Let me go get our dough and we'll show you what we're up to. So let's talk dough. This I picked up yesterday from local pizza shop. I always buy their doughs. Their dough is really, really good. So if I don't feel like making it, I'll just pick it up the night before. I'll throw it in the fridge. And then what you want to do is you want to let it rest. Now, if you're going to make this in a traditional pizza, you want to let it rest for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. This has only been an hour right now. We're going to start to stretch this out. We're going to use a cookie sheet here. It's just a standard full size here. And if you wanted to make your own dough, you're going to want about a 550 to 600 gram dough ball for this recipe. Okay. So this has been sitting on the counter for an hour. We're going to put in a fair amount. Hang on. I got some spring or summer blowing in on here. <laughs> We're going to put a little bit of olive oil here. And when I say a little bit, I mean three tablespoons or so. What we're going to do here, is we're going to stretch this out a little bit. And actually, my bad. <laughs> Let's spread this around first. Just make sure you get all the edges. There you go. And we'll throw this in here. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to stretch this out, but you want it even, right? We don't want thin pieces. So right now the gluten's going to fight you a little bit. So break it out a little bit, pop any bubbles. You can try and 
stretch it a little bit. Now I'm going to turn it over just so I get a little bit of oil on both sides. That'll just help keep it moist. And this is still cold to the touch, just to give you an idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in, in plastic wrap, cover it up. We don't want any air touching this. I'll put two sheets on it and then I'm going to take it inside and I'm going to let it rest for about another 20 minutes. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll press our fingers into here. The gluten will have relaxed and we're eventually going to get it out to the other edges. Now, it doesn't have to go all the way out. We just want to make it just a little bit larger. I'll probably get it close by the end, but if you want a thicker version of it, you don't have to press it out as, as far. But right now, a little bit further that we can go here and we'll give this 20 minutes to relax. We'll stretch it out again. We'll probably have to do it twice. And at that point in time, then we'll have it out here. I'll, I'll show you when we get to that step. In the meantime, let's talk about the most important part of this recipe. That is the sauce. So the sauce we actually made last night, it's in the fridge right now. And you want to give yourself about an hour for this sauce. Okay. Super easy to make. We've got two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of butter. Let that come up the temperature. You're going to gently simmer some garlic. So what we're doing is we're taking five or six cloves of garlic. You're going to use a microplaner. We're going to microplane that into our buttery goodness. Let that become more fragrant. You don't even have to get any color on your garlic. Just give it 30 seconds to a minute. Then what we're going to do is we're going to dump in one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. We're going to use a tablespoon of sugar. We're going to use about a tablespoon and a half of oregano. Tablespoon's fine. I like a little bit more, so I make it about a tablespoon and a half. I just eyeballed it. And then we're going to get a couple shallots, put those in there. And what you want to do is you want to simmer this for about 45 minutes. Our goal is to make it nice and thick. It is going to take 45 minutes. So stir it every five, 10 minutes, just a very, very gentle simmer. And then what you want to do is once we get to about that 45 minute mark, it's going to be nice and thick. You're going to take a fork, take out the shallots, remove them, and then you're going to put that sauce into a container, let it cool, and then throw it in the fridge overnight. Why are we doing the day before? You can do it the same day. I've done it before, but the, the flavors just don't meld as well. If you let it sit overnight, it just develops into a nicer, sauce. Also, you want to serve it cold and put it on top of this pizza because it's going to be super thick and that's what we're looking for in this pizza. I'm going to let this rest for about another 40 minutes and I'll bring it back. I'll show you where we're at. So here we are about 35 minutes later. I have stretched this twice. I decided not to stretch it too aggressively so it would be a little thicker. All depends how you like it. Big thing here is that I have two pieces of plastic wrap here. What I did is I stretched them really tight. You don't want it to touch the top of the, the dough. I mean, there's a little bit of olive oil there, so it shouldn't stick, but if it sticks, it'll be a pain in the butt to deal with. If you've got a little bubble, just pop the bubble. That's pretty, not too bad. We can pull this out just a little bit. This sauce, I just pulled out of the fridge. Look at how thick it is. That's what you want, right? You want a really, really thick sauce. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on and spread it around and you're going to, you're going to put, pretend it's a cake and put on a thick layer of frosting, except for in this case, it's going to be sauce. And you really, you don't want to see, you can see when you're getting too thin, you see a little bit of uh, the dough through the sauce, cover it back up. You don't really want to see any white through the sauce. You want it that thick. Now the real question I'm thinking here is how many of you have actually frosted a cake? <laughs> I bet you not too many of you. I won't judge. It's not like I've done it very often myself. I'm not a baker. Here's our sauce here, or sorry, here's our pizza here with our sauce on there. As you can see, the only white that you can really see is a couple pieces of garlic there. Other than that, it's a nice thick red there. Now what I've done here is I've backed this down to 425. I've actually not made this on a Kamado. Normally I make it in my oven. You can make this in the oven. It's actually the only way I've made it many times. Uh, in the oven it's 450 for 20 minutes. At the 10 minute mark, you rotate it around, make sure you get some even cooking. Since we've got some radiant energy coming down from the top here, I decided to back it down to 425. As you can see, there's no cheese or anything on top of this to bake. So we're not, this is why I'm not using a pizza oven. We're just using the heat. We're gonna get the bottom crunchy 
uh, but we're just using the heat to cook the rest of it. So let's throw this guy on here. Bring you. So now what we'll do is we'll close this up and I'm gonna let it go for about eight minutes and we'll have a look and I'll probably rotate it just to make sure we're getting some even cooking. Been 10 minutes, we're just gonna rotate this around. You can see we've got just a little bit of browning back here. Not too much, we've got a ways to go. We're still gonna probably go a full 10 minutes still. We're gonna go another 10 minutes. You want your crest a golden brown. I'll bring it back to show you what that looks like. So it's been another five minutes. I'm noticing that the bottom is done, but the top is not. Now, if you do it in the oven, it's not on a hot surface, it's on a, a rack, so it's not really getting as much radiant heat in the bottom, but because it's sitting on that pizza stone, it's cooking quicker. So normally what you do is once it's done cooking, you put it on a, a cooling rack so you can protect the bottom and make sure it's crunchy. I'm gonna put this on it right now just to elevate it off that bottom to stop the cooking and then we'll just keep cooking the top for a little bit here we're pretty close but i don't want to overcook the bottom so we will basically go like so we're close but you can see that the this bottom edge there is a little darker than the rest i want to get some color on this so we're just going to give it probably another three minutes and that'll be done time to get this guy off so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a spatula, lift this up. That, my friends, is a thing of beauty right there. Now, it doesn't have any cheese yet. I know that. We're going to get to that in a second. First, we have to let this cool down. So this is what we call a Philly tomato pie. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cool down for a good hour, and then we're gonna put some cheese on the top of it, not mozzarella, you'll find out in a few. Let me let this cool down and I'll bring it back and we'll look at the final product and give it a try. So it's been an hour, we're cooled down. Let me show you the bottom here. You can see we're nice and golden brown, it's got a little crunch to it, gonna be good. Now the one thing you can see across the top here is there's a couple spots that got a little dark as I tried to push this along, typically, it's just gonna be red. You're not even gonna see any, any black marks at all. I've just got a couple here, but just pointing out to you that normally it would just be perfectly red, a nice thick sauce. Now here I've got some pecorino, and this is actually not as thin as I thought it would be. We're just gonna put a little across the top. It's not supposed to be a lot. Normally I grate it myself, but I just saw this pre-grated stuff and I figured I would give it a shot. Normally, I like, to, I like it to be a little bit of a more finer powder. Use like a microplane or something really small, fine, but it'll be all right. Now, the funny thing about this pizza, this is traditional Philly tomato pie, sweet garlicky sauce with a nice crust. You can make them thick, you can make them thin. But I'll tell you something. I had a friend here a few years ago and he looked at this and he's like, man, that pizza probably be good if it had some cheese on it. I said, shut the F up, <laughs> try it. And then about 30 minutes later, he taps me on the shoulder and says, man, you better get that pizza away from me because I'm gonna eat the whole damn thing. So it is delicious, it's a sweet sauce. Before I cut this up, I wanna talk about the contest. I'm making a change going forward. So traditionally I have a contest every video and then the following video I do a drawing. It's a lot of overhead and I've got to be here Mondays and Wednesdays to make sure I do that drawing in real time. So what I'm going to do is every con every video, we're going to have a contest. I'll give you hashtags for that video, but I'm going to move the drawings once a month. I have not decided whether or not I will do four $25 gift card drawings or I'll do one $100 gift card drawing. Either way, if you're a Patreon member, I'll double it. So for this video, we will do hashtag Philly hashtag tomato pie. All you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like the video, leave a comment down below with those two hashtags. And if you have a preference of $25 gift cards for drawings or one for a hundred bucks, let me know, feel free to comment down below, but I'll do that in August. So let's slide this guy off and we'll cut this up. And 
the way this is designed to be served is to, just to do small little pieces. This is an appetizer, so traditionally what I'll do is I'll cut like so. So now you got a, a bunch of little pieces about that size. I'll tell you what, next time you have a party, if you make this, make two of them, it'll go quick. Let's see how we did. I'm gonna take a big old piece back here. You can see it's about traditional pizza height. The sauce totally makes this. It's thick but it's a little bit sweet, not overpowering. I don't really like sweet things. Got it, a good amount of garlic in it, but it's just a nice, it's like a, punches you in the face with tomato. It's really intense, but you've got a lot of crust there to offset the intensity of that sauce. This is something that if you've never tried before, you've got to try it. It is absolutely delicious. I have made this for well over hundred people, at this point, it is never, ever disappointed. It's a unique little appetizer that people come, they try it, and they tear it up. So, like I said, make two. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.